Glenn Davis, moniker Mr. Cologne 76, is a perfume connoisseur and a brand ambassador for the perfume industry who connects fragrance enthusiasts with emerging and established brands. An Instagram savant, he provides his social media following with well-curated photos, analyses of perfume notes, and interviews with industry professionals through his two groundbreaking programs, uh, Scent Provoking Sunday and Center Stage. Now recognized as a leading, credible, and trusted voice in the fragrance community, perfume retailers are soliciting him to do product reviews and sample giveaways. He also served as a guest contributor and social uh, media representative at perfume trade shows for esteemed online blogs like Seth Vermont. Glenn's multi-pronged approach packaged with his professional, knowledgeable, and smooth island style has resulted in Mr. Cologne 76 becoming a master influencer. A polished and generous agent of change, Mr. Cologne 76 profile continues to grow in popularity. When he is not inspiring the world to have good smelling days, quotes, uh, Glenn is a US Navy veteran who has flourished as a perioperative nurse at multiple military installations and hospitals. Equipped with a smorgasbord of professional and life skills, Glenn Davis is the real deal and simply put a timely game changer for the fragrance community. Uh, Manetta will put his uh, website, I'm sure, in the chat box, as, as I know she's so good at. And Glenn, welcome. Before I get started, I wanted to say thank you to uh, Saskia Ardenal Faction, um, Clara Scent Lab, and Manetta. I just want to say thank you for the invitation to give a talk. And uh, hello to any Mr. Cologne 76 uh, fans that may have logged in. I uh, just want to say hello. So my talk is going to be on the role of collectors slash reviewers slash uh, content creators in the fragrance community. And I, I am very happy to give this talk because it's something I am intimately familiar with and I enjoy very much. So my talk is going to be, uh, I'm going to touch on what the fragrance community is. I'm going to touch a little bit on influencer marketing cap on the role and responsibilities of content creators. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the skill set that content creators, collectors, reviewers uh, should possess to be successful in this role. And, and when I use the word content creator, I'm using it uh, to, to, to include reviewers, um, anyone that's creating digital media on any sort of social media platform. So the fragrance community is comprised of Perfume enthusiasts, uh, perfume collectors, reviewers, brands, retailers, anyone that's involved in the industry that's present on any sort of social media platform, they comprise of the fragrance community. Now, the fragrance community has existed for a very long time, probably for as long as perfumes have been around. The, the difference is today we're all connected and we are connected very closely because of the advent of computers and more recently cell phones. So the fragrance community, the dynamics have shifted. There was a time, and I can attest to this, where I learned about new perfumes when I would go to the supermarket, I would get a magazine, I would open it up and see, and, and see a scent strip or sometimes it would be a little packet of perfume and I would oftentimes rip them out and rub them on my skin. That was how I learned about new perfumes. Then the advent of the internet, perfume lovers were probably most likely sharing their thoughts on websites such as base notes and forums like that. Move forward a little bit and we had YouTube created and reviewers started reviewing fragrances and posting videos for people to come and watch. The difference with YouTube and social media today is YouTube was designed where you had to actually go look for the content. Fast forward a little bit more, Facebook came around and you had Facebook groups. It shifted the dynamic of um, the fragrance community. People started connecting more because you had groups of people that was talking, uh, people started selling bottles, decans, and that is kind of how I entered the fragrance community was via Facebook groups. Fast forward a little bit more, and then you come to Instagram, which is primarily where my content lay. So 
Instagram is a little bit different than the Facebook dynamic or even YouTube. Instagram is based on an algorithm that encourages you to engage and have real conversations with your community. So this made things really prime for what's known as influencer marketing. Now, influencer marketing has been around for a very, very long time. I'm talking centuries ago. And to some extent, any family or friend that you may have is also an influencer if they positively talk about something. So once influencer marketing started happening, brands started tapping into uh, in, you know, influencer marketers, social media influencer marketers, because they were effective. They were able to target a very specific uh, audience so that they could connect their product with a customer, i.e. a fragrance lover. Now, in the development of influencer marketing, there was a dark time, there was a period when influencer marketing had a very bad connotation. And that happened because there were some people that just used their popularity um, for a quick buck. There were people that were doing influencer fraud. They were buying followers, buying likes, and they were essentially inflating their appearance to create more influence. So there was a time, there was a dark connotation to the word influencer. But the truth is, most influencers aren't doing that. Most of them are doing the time. They are putting in the effort. They're putting in the energy to build their following, build their, con their community, and create content. So let's talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of reviewers, content creators, their main role or responsibility is to create content that is going to connect, again, the perfume brands to the end customers. Everything that they do will somehow be related to creating that content so that they would make that connection happen. And a lot of this happens behind the scenes. People sometimes take for granted the amount of work the amount of real energy that goes in to, to making this happen. And I'm going to talk about a couple of those things. Uh, one of them is managing the brands that you are actually collaborating with. There are several email communications that happen, you know, either when you reach out to a brand or a brand reach out to you between that conversation and when you see a post where you know a reviewer is reviewing something or unboxing something, there's a lot of conversations that happen in between that. We also have to manage how we roll out campaigns. And when I when I say a campaign, it could be a perfume launch, it could be, it could be a giveaway, it could just be a review. That has to be rolled out in such a way as to maintain that humanistic relationship with your audience. A large part of being a reviewer, content creator, is your engagement with your community. The truth is, I spend more time engaging with my community via DMs, via responding to comments, via going to other people's Instagram posts and commenting and, and getting involved in conversation. I, I read a book once that said that the real currency on any social media platform is conversation. So if you're not spending the time engaging with that community, you, can, you might as well hang it up. It is absolutely not gonna happen. Here are some other things that, uh, that, that are included in, in your role as a content creator reviewer. Going to trade shows. Last year, I was fortunate enough to attend Exxon's in Milan for the first time. That was a huge undertaking for me and a giant step in my role as a content creator. Um, I was able to meet and shake hands with many brands and more importantly, other perfume lovers, some were other content creators, but many of whom were just passionate perfume lovers that were happy to meet. So that's, that's a real big responsibility as a content creator. You have to get out there. 
If you're not at trade shows, it could be small events like the biennial scent fair that I attended uh, two years ago in LA. You know, that was something that I hadn't known about, but when I heard about it, I was like, I want to be a part of that and went out to LA. All right. Um, product launches. If there's a launch of a new fragrance, you may be going to a store. I've done that on uh, several occasions here in Dallas, uh, as well as in Arizona. You, you have to do these things to be able to connect with the community and also the retail outlets that are selling these products. So that all goes into being a content creator reviewer. Another big aspect of it is putting out fires within the community that you have created. There's a saying that when you rise to the top, you aren't doing things correctly unless people are talking about you. And oftentimes that talk is not in your favor. So you spend a significant amount of time putting out fires, um, you know, correcting wrong impressions and just, you know, letting your character show within your community. All right. It's important to be honest, transparent, and ethical. I'm going to say that again. It's important to be honest, transparent, and ethical. There are some people that, because of the stigma attached to influencers, they automatically assume that if an influencer is talking about something, it can't be good. And that is, that couldn't be more far from the truth. I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be having this talk today, I wouldn't be Mr. Cologne 76 if I was all, if I wasn't always honest and ethical. I had to start off doing that and continuing doing that in order to maintain my community. So a significant amount of time is spent doing that. And of course, content creations, whether I'm making an unboxing video, whether I'm reviewing a perfume house, whether I'm exploring samples, a significant amount of my time is spent doing that. I also feel like in my position, one of my roles is educating my audience, be it on perfume houses, perfume notes, be it on how to approach niche perfumes, how to get started. I feel it's a reviewer's responsibility to not just try to get people to buy fragrances, but to make people make informed decisions. More than anything, I feel it's my responsibility to ensure that I'm telling people, hey, these were the mistakes that I made when I started. Here's what I think you should do. Here's what I think you should do so that you have a collection that you love and not just a bunch of bottles that you don't love. So I feel educating is a huge, huge responsibility for collectors and reviewers. I want to touch briefly on, I need a sip. I'm going to touch briefly on some of the skills that is that are important to be successful as a content creator reviewer. You got to be self you got to be a self starter. You have to be a self starter. No one is behind me cracking a whip saying, "Glenn, you need to do this unboxing. You need to do this review." You have to have that internal drive that hardworking ethic, and you have to have a vision and some ambition. Otherwise, it, you can burn out. You can burn out if you don't have a vision of what do you wanna do with your, you know, your presence on social media? What do you wanna do with that? So you have to be personally motivated. You have to have a strong track record of people enjoying and liking what you do so you can continue growing in popularity. And it's a balancing act because again, the more people that you come in contact with, the more people that you engage with, the bigger there's a chance that you're gonna, you know, ruffle feathers. You're gonna find people that, um, you know, strong personality types, and you have to be able to navigate those situations. And I've had to learn quite a bit in the years that I've been doing this. So, you know, the way I engage with people now versus you know, three years ago, it's totally different. And that was something that I had to learn. All right. You have to have an eye for design and aesthetic. Now, 
it is Instagram and it's about pictures, but I have learned that captions carry a whole lot more weight than photos. So again, that's a balancing act for me to be able to say how much effort I'm gonna put into my photos and how much I'm gonna put into my caption, all right? Um, the ability to engage with people, make yourself vulnerable. I tell people all the time, if you're not getting out there and putting yourself out there, it's really hard to do what I do. Yes, there are some accounts that have had success with simply posting a bottle here and there, but you have to be able to get involved, engage with people and have these conversations. And lastly, to be able to present things in your authentic self. I feel like that is something that someone's never gonna be able to uh, copy. That is something someone's never gonna be able to hand to me. That is something I've had to develop myself. So do we have any questions for Glenn? I'm sure there's quite a few. Um, in fact, I see one. So Maria Gower asks, uh, Glenn, is there a code of conduct to which influencers adhere, like points to address in their reviews? If not, should it be created? Um, code of conduct, there isn't anything formal. Um, even on, so there, there were two questions in there. If there's a code of conduct, um, there really isn't. Um, unfortunately, there isn't. And I see a vast difference in the way I conduct myself and the way some others conduct themselves. And, you know, I, I think that there is some merit to having these different flavors, if you will, in the fragrance uh, community space. I think there is some merit. As far as the, the, what I gathered from the question about the reviews was if there was anything standard and if there's some thought on standardizing. Again, that varies from reviewer to reviewer. And, and the truth is, even in, within myself, the way I do things now compared to the way I did it a couple years ago has changed. As you, as you do things more often, you evolve. So there isn't, there isn't a standard. You know, I know Luca Turin has put out books on perfume reviews, but I think we all do things differently. And, and it's because we all value different aspects of a fragrance. We all value um, different, you know, whether or not it's important to know who the perfumer is or what the notes are, or what feelings the, the fragrance evokes. So there isn't a standard. Uh, Lisa wants to know what trends you see in Instagram marketing that new scent makers may be able to benefit from. Um, new trends that I've seen, especially since uh, COVID has happened, is that there are a lot more lives happening. The brands are, you know, the brands are working with influencers to, to get out there and share their story and meet the influencers uh, community. So there has been a lot more of that and it's really nice to see hmm. um a, a sort of a, a bit of a, a secondary question i guess would be elena uh, z um asks how do you get people to believe that what you say in your reviews is your honest genuine opinion and not paid promotion hi elena i just want to say hi to elena hi, um elena. you have to you know i've always said that i stand in my truth you know you have to believe you know, you have to have some belief in yourself. And, and my belief is I couldn't be here today if I, was, if I wasn't a truthful person. So I just stand in my truth and um, I try to be as transparent and as authentic as possible. And if somebody doesn't want to believe me, then the problem lies in that individual and not in me. Cherise Western says, hi, Glenn. Uh, and if you guys want to be uh, elevated and ask yourself, just put a note in, in the chat, but otherwise I'll just make for, for quickness. Uh, Therese says, hi, Glenn, what should indie or niche perfumers, indie slash niche perfumers do to best work with reviewers for a win-win scenario? Excellent question. That is a very good question. Who was that question from again? Therese Western. Therese, Therese Western. thank you for that question. Um, there is a, there's a perception from some brands that their social media needs to be sterile. And by that, I mean, it has to have a grid format and every, every picture on their feed should be, you know, brand, uh, you know, branded pictures. But the truth is it's social media. So if brands can throttle back and just be a little bit more flexible with their feed, 
um, share content that the reviewers are putting out, reshare it, repurpose it. It will benefit you, it will benefit the reviewer. So the next time that reviewer talks about your fragrance, they have a bigger audience. And what I mean by that is, say you made a, a fragrance and I posted that on my page and you really enjoyed what I did, you know, create a post about Mr. Cologne, say, look, I've had this experience. So now some of your followers would go follow Mr. Cologne. So next time Mr. Cologne talks about your fragrance, there's a bigger audience. And a lot of brands have, get, have come on board with that, but there's still a lot of brands that aren't doing it. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's shifting, but I feel there's a whole lot more room for growth in that field. Yeah, sort of like when, when the community supports itself, everybody rises, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so Monica asks, I think, or says, I think it is interesting that you are saying that your writing is more important uh, in the context of Instagram, I guess, uh, than the visual, considering that Instagram is known for the visuals. How did you discover about writing? Um, and, and Monica further says, I would say that it means you have a very engaged audience. Um, I did a lot of research. I'm an information driven person. I read books, um, YouTube, and I really drilled down on how to connect with my audience. And so it's twofold. It's one, you're correct. You have to have that relationship with your audience. So you have to develop that trust. You have, you have to, you have to respond to people so that they feel like if I comment, Mr. Cologne is going to respond. If I send Mr. Cologne a DM, he's going to respond. When you have that, then you've created that trust. And then when you create captions that are thought provoking, um, when you create captions that sort of share the perspective of your followers, they are likely to engage. So yes, I, I spend more, I put more effort into my captions than I do a photo. And that's just my style. You know, there are some, uh, there are some accounts that spend a lot of time creating their graphics and that's fine because it's a platform with different flavors, but this is what has worked for me. Okay, thank you. Um, Angel has two questions and Angel, I'm not sure if you want, or is it Angel? I don't know. I don't know if you want to ask live, but until I hear from you, I'll just read it out. So uh, Angel or Angel says, when you started out, did you have any particular vision in your mind? And now that you've reached a certain point, do you feel a sort of fulfillment <laughs> or is there still a lot of things you want to proceed with? Did your vision change over the course of time? That's a great question, um, Angel. The, the truth is when I got on Instagram, I was just posting things that revolved, that my life revolved around. And that was my dog, food, vacation. And a lot of it was fragrances. I sort of stumbled into this, um, into this role as Mr. Cologne 76. So in the beginning, there was no vision. And then at one point, I wanted to simply connect with my audience. And now I have an audience that's really, you know, engaged and interested in what I have to say. And, um, you know, I told somebody once that I want to be the Oprah Winfrey of fragrances. And, and that is the vision that I have. I, I, want to be, I want to be that guy. When people think of niche perfumes, especially in the social media space, I want to be that guy. Are you ready for a few more, Glenn? We're peppering you I'm, here. I'm great, yeah. Okay, you're good. More. All right. Okay, anonymous attendee says, how can indie perfumers verify the influencers reaching out to them, and how can it be a fair exchange for both parties involved, as many ask indies for free product without a guaranteed return? Excellent question. Um, as an indie perfumer, I understand that Instagram may not be your strong, uh, your strong, your strength. But you have to do your due diligence. You have to look at the level of engagement that influencer has. Not the number of followers, the, the engagement. And by that, I mean how much dialogue is happening on their posts. How many times do you see people say, you know what, I'm going to pick this up or I'm going to get a discovery set because you recommended it. How much conversation is happening about that person off his post? You have to do your due diligence. You can no longer reap the benefits of social media influence without being in it. It's like the stock market. You, you can't just want to 
win on the stock market if you're not in it making bids. So you, you have to you have to get involved. You have to join that conversation. The only way you're going to successfully benefit from that conversation and harness the full potential is to join that conversation. Um, another question, uh, Bayana. Um, oh, and Elena Z says, great answer, Glenn, wise as always. Thank you. Uh, Bayana Davis asks, how often should one post to social media? What is an adequate saturation point before you start over flooding your followers? And I would second that question. I have a hard time with that myself. So, um, I've, seen, I've seen mixed answers. I see one extreme say, you know, three times a week. I, I've seen another one that said, you know, one a day. The, the truth is it varies for your audience and the size of your uh, following, okay. It, when I, uh, sorry, it varies for your niche, and also the size of your following, okay. And posting on Instagram isn't only on your on your page. There are stories, there are lives, okay. So it's you know when I think of my posting habit, it's not just the stuff that I post on my pages, what I post in my stories is what people are reposting when I create content. That's also Mr. Cologne 76 being out there. So that all falls into that answer of how much you should post. Okay, thank you, Bayan. I hope that answered your question. And then I think Angel had a second question, which I'll ask now. So what should be the key strategy to stay relevant and relatable at the same time inspirational? With your audience be authentic be authentic be authentic you have to be authentic and you have to join that conversation you have to converse with the pe with the people that are in the niche that you're trying to get into um, you have to create content that is going to inspire people to have conversation and I want to make this analogy Think of Instagram as being in a museum and you're walking by with a group of friends and you're checking out the different ex exhibits. If there is a caption at the bottom of an exhibit that's going to promote conversation, your group may stand there and speak longer. You get in front of something that's pretty, but there was no words. You'll look at it and then you'll move on. So you have to create that conversation and that is where the caption comes in. So it's not just the graphics, it's the conversation. Okay, it's a good analogy. Uh, Chitan Singh uh, follows up his compliment from a minute ago with, um, with a question, which is, uh, I'd, I'd like to hear this actually, is what, what made you start your, your journey with fragrance? Like what got you into this uh, in the beginning? Sure, um, I was introduced to, into fragrances by my dad. My dad always wore fragrances. Um, as a little boy, there was a day he was taking me to school and we gave a neighbor a ride. You know, I lived in a little village in Trinidad. Not everybody had cars. A lot of people walked. And when the neighbor got into the car, they complimented my dad on his fragrance. And when they left, um, you know, I, I was teasing my dad that he always got compliments. And he told me, he said, I might not always look good, but I'll always smell good. And, and that resonated with me, it's, it stuck with me. And by the time I started having my first job at 17, part of my paychecks were for fragrances. And that is what started, you know, that journey for me. Did you equate it with a sort of a, a writer, a, like an adult, becoming an adult wearing fragrance? Like, No, it, it really wasn't um, a rite of passage because I was wearing his stuff as a little boy. Right. You know, and I, and I was always, I always related to things from a scent perspective. I would be that guy, you know, I grew up on a farm and, um, you know, there were dead animals, but I had to, I had to take a whiff. I had to know what it smelled like. Everything I had to know what it smelled like. So I always related to things from a scent perspective. Cool. So uh, let's end on, a, on an optimistic note. So when, when if Fred um, says, hi, Mr. Cologne 76. Have you come across fragrances in recent time that never made it to your Instagram page? And what would the reasons be? Um, I have a lot of fragrances that I've come across that haven't made it to my page recent times because 
Um, my dad is ill and I have throttled back from the amount of content I've been creating. So the truth is I have a lot of fragrances that simply haven't made it onto my, um, onto my Instagram page. That is one instance that it, this has been happening. And in the past, um, I've, you know, come across just a tiny fraction of fragrances where as wide and as wild as my scent taste is, I just couldn't get around to appreciating them. And I would typically reach out to that perfumer, that brand and say, look, I am not liking this. I can tell it, it, it's going to have a particular audience, but I'm always concerned that a negative review is going to hurt a brand more than help them. So I, I leave it up to that brand to, 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 to tell me how to pro proceed with, with sharing my thoughts. And, and I've had instances where the brand said, well, you know, just, just hold on to it. And, and I keep trying them because the truth is my taste is evolving. So you just have to keep trying them. And, and sometimes you grow to like them. I have a fragrance right now from Imaginary Authors that I did not like several years ago. Now I love it. So which one? It's um, Cobra and the Canary. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I love that fragrance now, but I, in the beginning, I absolutely didn't like it. Yeah, it's funny how that happens, huh? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, um, I don't want to impose on your time. I, I'm sorry your father's sick. That's, I didn't know that. Thank um, you. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time <laughs> and your no, willingness to have a chat with us, Glenn. And it's always a pleasure to see you. Not a problem. Um, I, am, I am honored to, to have been chosen to, um, to give this talk today. I feel like this is a next step. In my in my journey as Mr. Cologne 76, and I'm glad that I could have done that with Art and Olfaction at the Experiment Experimental Sense Summit, and to all the Mr. Cologne 76 family that showed up to be here today, I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time out to come in and be here with me. I appreciate that.